the really great qualities of a rubber process analyzer is that you can use it to gain key insights into the molecular properties of your raw materials, polymers, and compounds. ASTM D6204 outlines just how to do that. It is a three-part test method to understand molecular properties, processability, and non-isothermal curing properties. For today, we're going to look at part A, molecular properties. Molecular properties directly relate to processing properties, including mold flow, dye swell, and others. Now within ASTM D6204, the test method uses an RPA to determine a polymer or compound's average molecular weight, molecular weight distribution, and long chain branching characteristics. So why use this test? We see that checking incoming compounds or polymers for molecular properties will prove consistent deliveries from a supplier, like a custom mixer. The standard data provided by a supplier typically includes cure parameters, Mooney viscosity, among other physical properties, but what we know from ASTM D6204 is that Mooney viscosity is not a safe indicator of molecular properties. So if you receive a compound with identical cure parameters and Mooney viscosity, but it still processes differently, then this test is one of the greatest incoming checks you can do to develop tighter tolerances. It will also answer one of the most important questions. Does this problem reside with the compound or the process? Moving beyond the incoming checks, from the R&D perspective, we know that we can use this test method to open a window into processing characteristics and possible field performance. Let's quickly define the following. Average molecular weight, molecular weight distribution, and branching characteristics. Average molecular weight describes the average length of polymer chains contained within the compound. Compounds are made of long, short, and medium length polymer chains. The most quantifiable way to understand the nature of chain lengths is to take the average size of all those chain lengths, thus giving you the average molecular weight. However, average molecular weight does not indicate the range of sizes specifically. That is left for molecular weight distribution. Molecular weight distribution is a statistical representation as to how narrow or broad the bell curve of molecular weights would be. So if the bell curve is wide, you statistically have a variety of polymer chain sizes within the compound. If the bell curve is narrow, you statistically have a tighter group of polymer sizes. Branching characteristics refers to the number of connection branches or nodes we find in the polymer. So how do we determine average molecular weight with an RPA? ASTM D6204 method A uses a fixed low strain and temperature with multiple steps in frequency to understand this blueprint. Let's use this real life example. Injection Molder A just received two batches of the same compound from its primary compound supplier. EPDM batch 1 processed flawlessly, while EPDM batch 2 encountered challenges, like mold fill. When performing this test method, we need to calculate G prime, the elastic modulus, and G double prime, the viscous modulus, as a function of frequency, and then plot them similar like the graph seen here. So once we have them graphed, we need to determine exactly where these lines cross over with one another. When examining the x-axis, the rule of thumb is that the average molecular weight is greater at the lower end of the frequency in which a crossover point is located. So we can see that compound EPDM2 had a molecular weight outside the optimal crossover point. What can this test tell you about the molecular weight distribution? Think about it like the molecular size distribution instead. The x-axis tells you about the average molecular weight, but on the other hand, the y-axis tells you about the molecular weight distribution. Let's get back to our graph. The next rule of thumb is the following. The lower the crossover point is on the y-axis, the greater the distribution of molecular sizes. EPDM2 is higher up on the y-axis. This means that the statistical bell curve of polymer chain sizes is narrower than that of EPDM1. So what about the branching characteristics of these compounds? We need to calculate the tan delta of the viscous modulus over the elastic modulus as a function of frequency. Once we have it plotted, it will look somewhat like this. Here is what you need to know. The more level the tan delta graph, the greater the branching of the base polymers. The more of a slope the tan delta has, the less branched these polymers are. EPDM2 has less of a slope, meaning polymer chains are more branched than EPDM1. ASTM D6204 is made of three parts. Today we looked at part A, which gives insights into the average molecular weight, molecular weight distribution, and branching characteristics of a compound. Looking at these characteristics will give you a greater confidence of your incoming compound quality, and we know that we can start predicting processing performance much better. The next section, part B, closely examines processability. For more information on this test, please visit our website or click the link below.